The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. The wonder dog King was at his master's side when Sergeant Preston approached the wooden bridge that spanned the Monolek River. As he saw a friend coming from the opposite direction, King barked in recognition, then turned to the mountain. Yes, King, it's old Pierre, just about to cross the bridge. We'll meet him on this side. Hi there, Pierre. No need to hurry, Pierre. We'll wait for you. We'll wait here for him, King. There, the bridge! The small Frenchman threw his arms off wildly in a hopeless attempt to save himself as the supporting timbers buckled and the bridge dropped into the swirling river. King was tense as Pierre disappeared beneath the water. Then he heard Sergeant Preston's voice. After him, King! Get him out! Like a bullet from a gun, the husky shot forward. In one instant, he was running. In the next, he was in midair. The icy water sent a paralyzing chill through nerves and muscles to the very heart of the great dog. But King forged ahead, watching the surface of the river where the man had gone down. He saw Pierre's head rise above the water. Sergeant Preston's shout was unnecessary. King knew what to do. With strong, sharp teeth, he gripped the parka of the drowning man. Then, reversing his direction, headed back toward shore. That's it, King. Keep his head above water, fella. Just a little bit farther, King. The air was Come unconscious. He was now. a limp, leaden Take weight. To me. Come on. Good boy, King. Now I can give you a hand. We'll have him on dry land in no time. There, that does it, boy. <laughs> Can't do much for Pierre here. I'll have to carry him to his cabin. That'll be my job. You've done your part, King. The Mountie didn't know that the eyes of a killer watched from a distance as he lifted the unconscious Pierre to his shoulders and set out for the cabin of the half-drowned man. Red Bartel was concealed by a huge rock. He had been there when the bridge collapsed and had cursed when King pulled Pierre from the water. When he saw that the murder plan had failed, he hurried to the cafe in town to report to his partner, Spike Munson. Keep your voice down, Red. Tell me everything that happened. I was back of a rock, Spike, waiting to pull Pierre out of the river after he drowned. The bridge went down all right, didn't it? Sure, but Sergeant Preston and his dog was there. Preston, eh? Yeah, he and the dog rescued the old man. All the doggone luck. Probably got him out of the water before he was dead. I don't know about that. Preston worked over Pierre for a few minutes, then took him on his shoulder to carry him home. Preston see you? No, I kept out of sight. So you don't know whether Pierre's dead or alive? All I know is he was unconscious when Preston got him. Yeah. Pierre knows we're after his cash. If he lives to tell the Monty about us, we're going to be in trouble. Well, maybe he'll die without talking. Maybe. we got to find out whether he did or not. If Preston learns about us, we better clear out of these parts. Not on your life. Pierre got $10,000 for selling his gold mine, and I aim to get that money. Yeah, but Red, with a Mounty here, it's risky. We might have to kill the Mounty. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. There's no one gets away with killing the Mounty. Huh. <laughs> I'll figure something out. Well, you better figure fast. That Mounty will snoop around to find out why that bridge went down. And with what Pierre will tell him, and the axe marks in the timbers, he'll get us for attempted murder. We'll divert suspicion from us by showing Preston the axe marks. But... Hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> we'll go along with the others to repair the bridge and be there when Preston comes by. Sure. All we got to do now is to find out if Pierre's alive and able to talk. And the gold or the cash. Don't forget that, Spike. I want to find out about that $10,000. Hey, boys! Boys, the bridge is down! Well, we heard about it. Right. I just heard about it over at Pierre's place. He was on it when I pulled it up. There, Spike, now the news is out. How about Pierre? He's unconscious. 
I met Sergeant Preston carrying him into his camp. That don't help us much, Red. Still don't know if he's talking. Oh, wait. I'll find out about that. Hey, you, Weasel. Uh, me? Yeah. Come over here. I'll send him over to Pierre's place. Gosh, Mr. Bartell, that's terrible about the bridge and about Pierre, isn't it? Yeah, sure. The bridge will have to be fixed right away or nobody can get through to the next town. Oh, me and Spike will go over and help the boys fix up a temporary bridge. And now, listen, Weasel, uh, how'd you like to earn a dollar? Well, yeah, sure. What do I have to do? Uh, go over and see how Pierre is. See if his daughter needs some help. Joe said Sergeant Preston was there. That don't tell us about the old gent. Go on and find out. And come and let us know. We'll be down to the river. Well, I'll go, but I don't think Sergeant Preston likes me. Neither does his dog. Hey, Red, Spike. Yeah? Uh, we got to go fix up a bridge. You going to help us? You bet we are. Uh, count on us. Come on, boys. Let's get going. Papa is resting better now, Sergeant Preston. Yes, he's sleeping normally, Marie. Sleep will do more good for him than anything else. I put your mittens close to the stove in the living room to dry them. Your parka is wet, too. Oh, thank you, Marie. I, I do not understand how you managed to carry Papa all the way from the river. He's not heavy. Doesn't weigh more than 130 pounds. That's what I don't understand. Pardon? King and I crossed that bridge early today, and we came into town. It was all right then. Why should it collapse with your father's weight? King and I together weigh more than twice as much as he does. Mm, that is true, Sergeant. All this time the bridge has seemed to be strong, but all of a sudden it is weak. Marie, does your father have any enemies? Enemies? Oh, everyone is his friend. He... Yes? Oh, but there are two men he has spoken of. Who are they? One is Red Bartell, the other is called Spike. Oh, Munson and Bartell. I've heard of both of them. Did your father have anything they wanted? Mm, oui, Sergeant. His claim. Has he found gold? In the cave of the singing lady, Papa found what he called a rich vein of gold. Oh, I mean to tell you, but in the excitement I forget. He went to Jackson City to sell the claim. When? Oh, he was on his way back from there when the bridge went down. I see. The syndicate had offered $10,000 for it. And Papa and I, well, we wished to leave the Yukon. We were going to use the money we would get from the claim for the tree. Well, that's strange. He wasn't carrying either gold or cash. No, he was not. Or perhaps he decided not to oh, sell. Oh, his decision was definite. He would not have changed his mind, I am sure. Uh, Marie. Oh, oh Papa. Marie. He's coming, too. Sergeant Preston, you... Uh, how... Uh, how... How did I... Uh... Oh, lean back on the pillow, uh, Papa. Marie... Oh, you uh, and Sergeant Preston brought you home, Papa. They saved you from the river. Oh, 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 now I remember. King, where is he? In the living room, Pierre. We closed your bedroom door to shut out any draft. Uh, he, he is good dog, fine dog, <laughs> a fine dog. Yes, he is. How do you feel? I, uh, I... I will be all right. Listen. Yes? My pocket. Inside my parka. What is it, Papa? Papers. Get them from Parker. I will look in the pocket for you, Papa. In oilskin pouches. Copy of bill of sale for claim. <laughs> and note for you, Marie. <laughs> Easy, Pierre. Easy. <laughs> uh, no. No, I must tell you. Well, just answer my questions. Nod your head if you haven't the strength to speak. Uh, I, I, I am able to speak. Did you sell the claim? See, the, the papers were in the pouch. Uh, we, I sold the claim for $10,000. The papers there, they showed the sale. Well, uh, what happened? Where is the $10,000? Oh, I had it. Were you robbed? No. No, I was followed. Followed? Those two, Red and Spike, they follow me. I saw them following. Did they know you had the money? We, oui. I talked a lot about going to sell claim. They knew about money, that I had it. Oh, and they got it. No, no, Marie. I fooled them. I fooled them. <laughs> Easy, Pierre. Easy. I, I, 
I must tell you. As I came to cave... Oh, the cave of the singing lady? We. Oui. I had to pass it to reach bridge to get home. Oui, I know. I, I went inside. I hid money there. Just a minute, King. He probably wants to come in here. Uh, did Munson and his partner see you go into that cave, Pierre? They knew I was in there, we. Oui. <coughs> but they did not know I hid money there. I waited long time. I looked out of cave, but I not see them. So I went on to bridge. That's where I saw you. Uh, then bridge, it went down. They weakened it, I am sure of it. <laughs> These two, they wanted to kill me. For $10,000, they would do anything. I'll find out who weakened that bridge, Pierre. Is there any chance of them finding your money? Sergeant, shall I let him in? He'll be all right, Marie. Uh, listen, Marie. The hiding place is one you know. It is where no one else could find oh, But, Papa, they must know where you have the money. As soon as Sergeant Preston leaves, they will follow us and try to get it. Now, Pierre, uh, where is that hiding place of yours? In the tunnel. There is chimney there. Oh, yes. Marie spoke of it. It is at far end of cave. The Pierre's description of the natural fault in the rock formation meant nothing to King. The dog waiting outside Pierre's bedroom had been trying to get Sergeant Preston's attention. King was interested in someone outside the cabin. He listened to the voices on the other side of the door and then made a decision. He stood up. Bracing himself against the door, King nuzzled the latch until it opened. King charged against Sergeant Preston's legs, then tugged at his breeches. Well, he's telling me there's something beyond that door. I understand, fella. Sergeant Preston. Oh, it's you, eh, Weasel? What are you doing here? Sergeant Preston, I just came How long were you eavesdropping at the bedroom window? Oh, I didn't eavesdrop. I uh, just went to see if anyone was at home. You couldn't see through that window. <laughs> Quiet, King. Come in here, Weasel. Uh, yeah. What does that weasel want here? We'll soon find out. I heard about Pierre's fall. I came to see if there was something I could do. I didn't mean no harm. Well, there is nothing you can do. Who sent you? Well, I, Who sent you? I, it was Red. Red Bartell. Oh, it was, eh? Red Bartell. You may tell Red Bartell that Pierre will be as good as new in a few days. Well, I wonder what made the bridge collapse. We don't know. But we're going to find out, and you might tell that to Red I'll get out of here before King helps you. I'm going. I'm going. I didn't mean no harm. I wonder if he heard Pierre say that his money's hidden in that natural chimney. And that pig. He is always snooping. Oh, Sergeant, you are leaving? Yes, I want to look at the bridge, Marie. As soon as I can cross to the other side, I'll get your father's money. Tell him not to worry. Be careful of those two, Sergeant. I will, Pierre. Your parka is wet from carrying Papa. Well, it's dry inside. Oh, but your mittens are all wet through. Here, take this pair of papas. Oh, thank you, Marie. You you will let me know what you find at the bridge. Yes, you'll hear from me just as soon as possible. Come King. Get another timber ready and let me take your axe. Yeah, hurry up to them planks. Keep that fire going. Don't worry about the fire. Give me a hand with this log, Red. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Don't burn any of the timbers with the axe marks on them. We're saving those for Preston. Wonder how soon he'll be along to look things over. <laughs> Here comes Weasel. Maybe he can tell. Yeah, he's coming fast. Hey there, Weasel. You look half froze. Come on over here and thaw out. Uh, gosh, the bridge is almost finished. I blame near everyone in town is working on it. How are things at Pierre's place? He'll be as good as new in a couple of days. Is the money there? He's there, and Pierre told him something about $10,000. What did you tell him? That information's for sale. Listen, you little sneak. Spike asked you a question. Let, let go of me. Answer him. All right, all right. Let go of my arm. Pierre told about hiding $10,000 that he got for selling his claim. Where? Inside a certain cave. Did he say what cave? The cave of the singing lady where his claim was at. So that's it, huh? That's what he was doing in the cave. And Preston's going there to get that money for Pierre. Where did Pierre hide the money? Oh, I couldn't hear all that they said on account of Preston's dog barking. But it's inside of that cave somewhere, and Preston knows the place. All right, Weasel, now shove on. What? what? I said shove on. 
And if you don't keep your mouth shut about this, we'll shut it for you permanently. Uh, hold on, you can't You take... gonna make trouble, Weasel? Uh, no, of course not. I, I wouldn't make no trouble for you, Mr. Bartell. Uh, see that you don't. Come on, Spike. But you two better be careful. Pierre told Sergeant Preston all about you. You mind your own business if you know what's good for you. Come on, Spike. The bridge is near enough finish for us to cross. You better cross and keep going, Red. Preston knows everything. He'll get us sure. Weasel says Preston's going after the money in the cave, and that gives me an idea. You'll take care of him so as you'll never go after anybody again. Hey, you know what I told you about killing a Mountie? <laughs> this won't look like any murder, Spike. Hey, Red, where are you going? Uh, we're trying out the bridge, Sam. Weasel can keep the fire going for you. Right. What's your plan? Right, we'll set a blast at the cave. Touch her off after Preston's gone inside and located Pierre's cash. That'll look more like an accident than murder. Yeah, but the cash will be sealed inside with Preston and his dog. We'll dig our way in and get the cash. Maybe the cave-in won't kill Preston. If it don't, we'll finish the job with a rock. No one will know the difference. You think we'll have time enough to do all that? Plenty of time. As far as everyone knows, the tunnel fell in before Preston found the yeah. cash. Pierre will know blamed well we had a hand in it. I'll deal with Pierre and his daughter later. And Weasel, too, if need be. <laughs> It won't be hard to handle things when that Maldi's out of the way. When Sergeant Preston reached the scene of the disaster, he found the bridge temporarily repaired. You've done well, Sam. Well, it's just temporary, Sergeant Preston. We're working now to strengthen the supports. I uh, don't see Spike Munson or Red Bartell. Ah, uh, they left a while ago. But look here, Sergeant. They said to be sure to uh, show you this. Oh, what is it? It's the old timbers. They got axe marks in them. Oh. Red and Spike uh, piled them up here. And... I see. An axe was used to weaken the bridge. You bet it was. And I'd just like to find out who swung that axe. We're going to find out. Which way did Spike and Red go? Across the bridge. Said they were trying it out. One King. Hey, where are you going, Sergeant? Across the bridge, sir. Well, I thought you said you were going to find out about the bridge. I am. But first I've got to visit a cave. <laughs> King reached the cave of the singing lady ahead of Sergeant Preston. While he waited at the entrance for the Mate to catch up to him, he listened with his ears cocked forward to the eerie sounds coming from within the tunnel. Sounds made by the wind in the shaft that Pierre was talking about, King. Not hard to understand why Marie calls this the cave of the singing lady. There was no reason to be suspicious about the many footprints at the mouth of the cave. A lot of work had been done in the tunnel. Tools and supplies were piled near the entrance. King sniffed curiously, and Sergeant Preston gave the supplies a casual inspection. There was nothing to arouse suspicion. Nothing to indicate that blasting powder had been buried and the fuse carefully concealed, ready to be lighted by the men who watched from a safe distance. Mining supplies, King. Come on, boy. You want to get to the end of this tunnel? Oh, the cavern's deeper than I thought. That shaft's quite a distance from the entrance. King noticed a patch of sunlight on the floor. Looking up, he saw a slanting slit through the rock, scarcely wider than his husky shoulders, and beyond the slit, the sky. Money should be hidden inside the shaft. Oh, I have to get this mitten off. Money must be in here somewhere. Oh, here's something. Yes, here it is. This is Pierre's money. The fur on the back of King's neck bristled. The dog turned as he caught the scent of unfriendly men near the cave's entrance. What is it, King? We're getting out of here right away, fella. Come on. The law of the survival of the fittest had taught King to sense danger before it struck. His instinct had sounded a warning, and he was anxious to get his master out of the cave at once. But before the mounting and his dog could reach the entrance... himself clinging to the earth. He raised his head and looked about. King! King! The dog saw his master pinned to the ground by a huge timber, one that had reinforced walls and ceiling. Can't move. I... Oh. 
King. King, are you all right, fellas? Good. The only light came from the slanting oh. chimney, but it was enough to show King the agony on Preston's face. The man tried to move beneath the beam. Oh. King realized that his master was trapped and went into a frenzy of action in an effort to move the timber. He gripped it in his strong teeth. He pulled, he clawed, he fought it from every angle. But his strength was not enough. Steady, King. No use, boy. No use breaking your heart and trying to do the impossible. Just take it easy a minute. There must be some way out. Some way to get outside in the fresh air, daylight. There's half light. Half light. The chimney. What if you can do it, boy? Up. I'll see if I can get this mitten out of my shirt pocket. There. Here, King. Take this mitten. That's it, fella. King knew that Marie Dupre had given the mitten to Sergeant Preston. King, go over there. Over to the shaft. Back, King. Back, boy. That's it, fella. Now look up, King. Up. That's it, boy. See? Now, King, take the mitten to Marie. Out, King. Bring help. The ceiling was low where the slanting shaft in the rocks opened into the cave. By standing on his hind legs, King could get a toehold on the irregular rocks inside the opening. He scrambled to the top. Outside, he paused only long enough to shake himself. Then, as he started toward the bridge, he heard the men who had been outside the cave. Hey, Spike, look! It's Preston's dog! How do you get out? Get him! Don't let him get away! With bullets streaking toward him, King cut to the side to take advantage of the meager shelter of some stunted growth and then put on an additional burst of speed. It was a race for life. A great-hearted dog against the killer's gunfire, and the life at stake was that of Sergeant Preston. King had to reach Marie Dupre. In the living room at Dupre's cabin, Marie looked anxiously at her father, who was sitting beside the fire. Do not worry about me, Marie. I am comfortable in this chair. Oh, but Papa, you should stay in bed until the sergeant returns. Bed? Oh. I cannot rest until I know Sergeant Preston is safe from the killers. Marie, it is time he should be back. I know that. <laughs> Pierre Dupre and his daughter stared in stunned amazement at the dog who had hurtled through the cabin window. Oh, mon Dieu. It is King. He jumped through the window. He smashed the glass. Came through it as if it were paper. But, but why? Why did he do it? Where is Sergeant Preston? <laughs> Marie, the dog wants you to look at something he has. Oh, really? Oh, I see it, King. It is a mitten. I... Papa. A mitten, you say? Oui, oui, I gave this to Sergeant Preston. King has brought it here. Well, that dog wants you to go with him. <laughs> Quickly, Marie. There is but one answer. Preston is in danger. Oh, oui, oui, King. I understand. I know what you try to tell me. We will go to the bridge and get the men to come with us. Then you can lead us to the sergeant. Get the last of them braces in place, Captain. Just one more brace against that timber. I got a hand it to you, Sam. You've sure seen to it that we got the bridge in shape. Tom! I... Tom! Hey, Sam, look. Marie Dupre is coming. Yes, and King's with her. Tom! Tom! Is the bridge nearly finished? Yeah, but what's the matter, Marie? Oh, something terrible has happened. What's the matter with King? Look at him over there. He went with Sergeant Preston. Well, I know. We saw them cross the bridge before it was finished. The dog streaked back a few minutes ago. He was alone. That is it. He came back alone and brought a mitten. This mitten. The sergeant was wearing it. Hey, do you suppose something's happened to Preston? Oh, I am sure of it. King acts like he wants us to go with him. See him over there? He looks like he's waiting for us. Yes, Red and Spike crossed just about a half an hour before the mounting. I oh, wonder... Oh, then he is in danger. Oh, come at once, Tom. Please hurry. All of you, we must get to Sergeant Preston. Come on, boys. Bring your tools. There's no telling what we'll need. Lead on, King. We're going your way. Sam, listen. Red and me, we Shut were... Shut up and get over there and start digging. You and Red being right outside this cave looks mighty suspicious. 
Kristen. Just after a cave-in, too. I tell you, we heard a blast and came to investigate. Uncle Kristen is inside this cave of the singing lady. I don't believe it. He is. I can't think of any other reason why his dog would almost tear his claws out trying to dig out the tunnel. Why, you're all crazy listening to a flighty girl. Come on, Spike. There's no use arguing. We'll go back to town. You stay where you are. Hey, Sam, we're through. We got a hole through to the inside. Oh, widen her out. Come on, boys. You got to widen her hey, out. Hey, King, come back here. Come on. Let's get over there. Oh, she's already in the tunnel. You know the tarp won't be there. We're coming, Preston. Get going, boys. Come on, Spike. We got to get out of here. Yeah, Preston's alive. Let's go, Red. No, you don't, Munson. Don't try running away. Yeah, but me and Red have got to get back to town. You we got some. To... You can argue with this gun if you want to make something of it. Uh, they are afraid. Perhaps they set off these blasts to kill Sergeant Preston when he went into the cave after my father's money. That's a lie. You can't prove that. We'll have the answer soon enough. When Preston comes out, we'll see what he says. All right. It was the work of but a few moments to widen the tunnel opening. Sergeant Preston was found pinned down by the fallen timber. Strong arms released the Monty. Come on, now, boys. There, there. Lean on us, Sergeant. We'll get you outside. Thanks, Sam. Oh, you hurt bad. No bones broken, I guess. I'll manage. We found Red Bartell and Spike Munson in front of the cave, and we come up to dig you out. Huh? I want to talk to those two. We thought you would. I owe a lot to you, King. He told Marie you were in trouble. Then let us hear. Careful now, stepping over these rocks. Preston, I'm sure glad you're alive. I'll bet you are, Munson. Here, Marie. This is your father's money. I put it in my parka just before the explosion. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to figure how a thing like that could happen. Yeah. That'll do, Rad. Save the lies. Lies, huh? Now, see here, Preston. I don't like your manner. You got nothing on me and Red. Mike, we... you and Red were after the money Pierre got from the sale of his claim. That's not true. You weakened the bridge hoping to kill Pierre. You told Sam to tell me about the axe marks in the old timbers. Hoping to throw suspicion on someone else. Why, well, you ornery double dealing polecat? What's he talking about? If you could prove that, Sergeant. They'll admit it, Sam. Admit it? You think we're crazy? You tried to trap me in the tunnel, but King got out. Someone fired at him, and he knows who it is. Look at him. Hey, he's showing his teeth. Steady, King. King knows who set off that blast, and he knows who fired at him. Take them, King. <laughs> Hey, Scott! Call him up! Take him away! He's got red down! I'll show you! Don't touch that gun, Spike! Preston! Preston, get him off! Call him up! How about it, Red? Will you confess? Who weakened that bridge? Spike! Spike weakened it! Why, you dirty double crosser! You stood by to make sure it went down so Pierre had drowned! Go on, Red. Keep talking. At least we were going to pull Pierre out and get the chance. After he had drowned. Well, look, I'll tell you everything. Well, All right, you blast the tunnel entrance. Because Preston knew about our plan. We so told us he was going to get the money. We, we figured to get him with a cave in and, and get the cash later. Oh, oh, you dirty trouble, frog. Get him away from me. All right, King, get away from him. Guard him, boy. So you wrecked the bridge, eh? Huh? Try to kill my father. And Sergeant Preston, too. Don't worry, men. The law will deal with these two. You're both under arrest for attempted murder. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. One fictional radio character whose actions are thought out to minute detail is David Harding, counterspy. Phillips Lord, who created the suspense-packed program, has definite ideas about Harding, his tastes, and his background. Before the program ever made its debut, Lord had put down on paper a description of David Harding and his entire family, believing that a definite picture of the man was necessary if audiences were to accept him. He pictured Harding as a 45-year-old man. He came from a small Wisconsin town. Harding, whose similarity to actual persons is purely coincidental, lives in a four-room suite by himself in Washington. 
All these details of character and personality go into making David Harding Counterspy the realistic-sounding program it is. For fast-moving mystery, don't miss tomorrow afternoon's David Harding Counterspy.